Well, most of us have a room in our house or multiple rooms that get out of control. They become the dumping ground. It's that place you put everything that you don't know what to do with. And it's very easy to close the door and try and ignore the space. The only problem is that it still hangs over our head. We still know that it's there, that it needs to be dealt with, and that we're not really gonna have our house done or under control until we get this space tackled. So today, let's talk about how we can get through an overwhelming space quickly. For most of us, we just need a game plan. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom. If we haven't met before, I'm married to Tom and we have four kids ages six through 11. I haven't said that recently, so I thought I would throw it in in case we haven't met before. We love sharing tips to help you simplify your house. We call ourselves minimalists, but just because you watch these videos, you don't have to go that far. You stop wherever you feel comfortable. But no matter who you are, where you live, most of us have a room that has gotten out of control. It is that place that we put everything that we don't know what to do with, or when we're speed cleaning, when company's coming, it just gets shoved in this room. And that's kind of what's happened to this room <laughs> recently. So this is our guest room, our foster care room. Uh, we haven't had any foster care placements yet. So this room has been unused. Actually, we did have one guest, so the bed got unmade and then it needs to get made again. But today I wanna go through a few steps of how you can tackle an overwhelming space. We're gonna break it down. We're gonna make it so much less scary. It does not have to be a scary space. We just need a plan and then you just follow the steps. You will work your way through these spaces. And most importantly, you're gonna feel really good about yourself when you're done. That's the goal, right? That this is not hanging over our head anymore. So let's get started. All right, so step one, never start decluttering unless you have a donation box and a black trash bag. I know it's easy to think like, oh, I'll run the donations out to the car, I'll make a pile and then I'll move them. I'll just throw stuff in the garbage as we go. I don't have black trash bags, I'll use a clear. I'm telling you, if you will equip yourself with these two items, it is gonna make this so much easier. There's a lot of stuff that we will donate if it's very easy to donate it. So by having a donation box handy, that makes it so much easier to actually follow through with donating something that you're not gonna need anymore. And of course, the black trash bag, we're gonna be throwing stuff away. We don't wanna second guess ourselves by seeing it through a clear bag or have other members of our household second guess us. Please, please, please have these items with you anytime you go to declutter. All right, next we have to put a parameter around what it is that we keep. So there's two main ways that we can go about this. One is to ask if it's container worthy and the other is to ask if I want to inventory this. So I wanna break this down to tell you what I mean. So often when we go into a space like a overwhelming room like this, we kind of just like work our way in from the door and we start by holding up items and we just ask ourselves, do I want to keep this? Do I need it? Do I use it? And that is very subjective. We have to use emotion. We have to think about it. Like when was the last time I used it? I don't know. Could somebody use it in the future? And this is difficult because there's no parameters around it. There's no guideline. I'm not weighing this against something else. So it's kind of just like floating, like do I use it, do I need it? But what we need to do instead is we need to have some kind of guideline or parameter for the stuff that we keep. So one question we can ask is, is it container worthy? This comes from Dana from A Slob Comes Clean. She says you can use the container concept to declutter your whole house. So what it means is that in any given space, like our guest room here, we have containers that are meant to hold our stuff. So in this room, we have this wardrobe. So in here, we keep Tom and I's like dress clothes or hanging clothes. And then on top is my out of season clothes. I still really like those canvas bags for storing things that are like off season or that you don't fit into anymore. You can put it in there, they're easy to store. And then over here, uh, yeah, let's close this. Um, we just have like electronic stuff. And then this shelf I've been reserving for when we have a foster kid or if someone would stay with us, that clothes, their clothes can go in there. And then we just have some like extra food supply in the very bottom. And so my thought is if we had foster kids that were like older, I could clear out more of this stuff easily to make more room for them. But this is kind of flexible. If we need to move stuff, we can. But that's also why I don't wanna fill it up with 
other stuff in here. So it really has to be something we use all of the time for it to take up space in this container. Otherwise, I just wanna get rid of it or store it somewhere else. So this is our container that's meant to store stuff in this room. And so now if I'm gonna use the container as my guideline and I'm gonna ask myself, is it container worthy? That gives me something to measure this against. So I'm gonna hold this up and I'm gonna say, okay, this is a backpack that we use when we travel or are out and about. So do I use this frequently enough? Does it have enough value to me that I want to take up valuable space in this container? And I would say, yes, we use this very frequently. So yes, I think that this is container worthy. Okay, but now let's look at another backpack we have in here. This one gets used less frequently. It's more like if we're like going on an airplane and we're all doing carry-on, then we might use both of these, but this one does not get used frequently at all. So if I say, is this container worthy? Uh, no, absolutely not. So then from there I can decide, okay, do I want to store it elsewhere in the house? Should I put it in the basement with our other luggage? or should I put it in my donation box because <laughs> I have it right here and it's super handy, right? So for me, for this, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna put it in the basement, I'm gonna put it inside our small suitcase so it's with all of the other luggage. I'm keeping that stuff together. And then I'm gonna take a tip from Dana from A Slob Comes Clean again here, and I am gonna go bring this to the basement where it goes because I want to make progress in this room. I might only have 10 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour. When I'm done, I don't want the space to be worse off because I pulled everything out and I undid everything in here. No, I want this space to feel at least a little bit better. So I'm gonna take this down to the basement right now. Before I go though, I'm gonna look around and see if there's anything else that needs to go to the basement. So I just noticed we also have this bag and this used to be like my overnight bag, but I recently, <laughs> upgraded, I gifted myself <laughs> this bag. So this is my new overnight bag. So I can actually donate this one now because I don't need it anymore. And there's nothing in it that I need. So I'm gonna donate this one. And then I can decide, okay, do I use this frequently enough, again, that I'm gonna take up real estate in this wardrobe? Or could this also get stored in the basement with our other luggage? I'm gonna say that this also could go in the basement. So I'm gonna take these two things with me and then I'm just gonna make one more quick pass around to see if there's anything else that needs to go down there. I actually, you can't see it, but I think ugh, there's been a random piece of trim in here still when we redid this room. So I'm gonna take this down there as well. And then I think that's pretty much um, what we have to go in the basement right now. So I'll be right back and then we're gonna talk about the other question. All right, so honestly, I actually, I just walked back here and I'm like, oh, this room already feels a little bit better. I've gotten some stuff up off of the floor. I got some stuff out of here. And so the container question is awesome. And again, the container could be a closet, a wardrobe, a dresser, a shelf, a cube shelf, anything that holds stuff can be the container. If you're in more of like a storage space, like if I'm organizing or decluttering or cleaning the basement, for me down there, the container is, we have those plastic shelves down there and anything I keep in the basement needs to fit on there. That is the parameter I've put in place for myself because I know if I keep more than that, it's more than I need. It's more than I can manage, it's more than I use. I forget about stuff that's down there and so by just using that as my parameter, as my guide. I never have stuff that's going to waste that I'm forgetting about. I mean, don't get me wrong, I still forget about stuff <laughs> that's down there, but way less than when we had a ton more storage than that. <laughs> And I know some of you are thinking like, yeah, your space is kind of overwhelming, but mine's really overwhelming. Like I have boxes stacked to the ceiling or I can't even walk in the space. And I wanna encourage you that the process is still the same. By asking these questions, it's causing us to rank the stuff. Like what stuff is really the most important in this space? And what is the other stuff that's just, it just isn't, right? Because when we just look in the room, it all looks the same. But when we start asking these questions, it causes us to let the stuff that truly is important rise to the top, get a spot in the container, and then the rest just has to go because we don't have space for it. All right, so let's move on to our next question. 
do I want to inventory this anymore? So what's so important to remember that every item in our house is something that we have to inventory. And so especially if you have a bigger house or lots of storage space in your house, it can be easy to keep stuff for just in case because we have the room, it fits in our storage spaces and we just kind of close the door and it's there. But we have to remember that this stuff is still weighing on our mind as like on our invisible to-do list like we've talked about before, but also at some point we are going to have to handle it. So even just this morning I was getting ready and I got this like Young Living facial oil and it's really nice, I like it. You're supposed to shake it up before you use it and then I put it on the back of my hand and use it with my moisturizer and sometimes when I use the dropper to put it on, I put the dropper back in but I don't screw it back on right away because I have this hand occupied and I'm trying to mix it to put on my face. Does that make sense? And so what has happened sometimes is I catch myself going to put it back in the drawer but the lid's not on and I'm like, oh no, that would spill all over. So uh, that happened this morning. I opened the drawer and I'm like, oh no, the oil had spilled all over the entire drawer. And I was like, darn it, that is super expensive. <laughs> and it also made a huge mess in that drawer. So now everything in there, I had to take out and wipe down. And because it's oil, I couldn't even just like wipe it down. I had to use soap and water to get it everything clean. Now, luckily I have simplified that drawer and I don't keep a ton of stuff in there. And so I'm like in the past that actually would have taken a really long time <laughs> to clean up. But luckily I've simplified that drawer. So it was still an inconvenience and it really bummed me out that I wasted so much of it but it wasn't a huge deal. I got everything wiped out, wiped down and put it back and went about the rest of my morning. But that's like a really tiny example. I had a friend just over the weekend post a picture saying that they came home from vacation to their basement being flooded and she showed a picture and it was full of storage stuff, boxes and totes and all kinds of stuff. That's devastating, right? That takes hours and hours to recover from. So anytime that we're keeping something or storing it, we have to remember that I'm still inventorying this item. I still am gonna have to care for it at some point. And so really asking ourselves the question when we hold something up to say, is this worth my time and my mental energy? Do I want to continue to inventory this item? Okay, so let's go through a few more examples. So these are what we moved our toys into. So we have um, these bins that work really well. My intention was for these to go in the bottom of this wardrobe so that that's where they could be stored and lived. They're definitely container worthy to me. So I'm gonna slide those into there. Okay, so what happened over here was that there was stuff that came in from the camper. If you recall our camper packing and organization video, we had like tons of napkins and paper plates, like way more than we'd ever use on one trip. And so I brought them in the house so that we could use them here. I also had been on like a soda water kick lately and I was trying out different flavors. I know I actually just really like plain. And so I should have stuck with that, but then I was in the store and do you ever walk by and you like see the new flavors and you're like, watermelon, that sounds fantastic, right? And so then I bought the watermelon and then I tried it and I'm like, I don't even actually really like the watermelon that much. Um, I wish I could give it to all of you that like watermelon. Um, I did think about giving it to Diana actually, uh, so I might need to do that. But anyways, so I have all of this extra stuff right now of soda water and napkins and plates and coffee. The problem is, is if I say like, okay, is this container worthy? Do I want to take up valuable space in our storage in here? The answer is no. I don't want to keep this much extra inventory. We do have some extra food storage that we keep in the bottom shelf and also in the basement for like emergency food storage. But none of this stuff is stuff you would need in an emergency, right? Like soda water, you could probably live without, <laughs> right? I mean, yes, having water stored, but not like flavored watermelon bubbly, right? We wouldn't need it. And so what I wanna do, because there's not room in the kitchen for this stuff and that's why it got in here, is that I want to use it up and I don't want to keep this much inventory of this stuff anymore. Again, because it's not worthwhile to me to have storage spaces dedicated to that. I would rather keep the extras for this at the store and get it when I need it. So what I need to do is I know 
like the soda water I'll only use it if I can see it so I'm gonna put these cases just at the end of the bed so that I reload the fridge as I use it up and I work through this because I know if I stick it in the closet here or the wardrobe here I'll forget that it's here and I won't use it up so I do want to keep it someplace visible I'm gonna use it up and I'm not gonna stock up like this again so I'm gonna get that stuff out of here. I'm gonna take it to the basement right now. I'm gonna move these where I'm gonna store them. I don't think this is ideal with the soda water, by the way. So I'm gonna move this stuff around and then uh, we'll keep going. All right, so we're making progress, so that feels good. Um, so these I had brought in from the camper because I was gonna ask Tom if he needed a set. So with our last camper, we inherited a bunch of extra stuff, which was very kind to the people. And so these came with it and then I put them in the next camper and then realized we don't ever use stuff like this when we're camping. And then I was gonna ask Tom if he needed it and then I realized he has a set out by our grill. So now what do we do with this, right? What do I do with an extra set of stuff? It could be useful if his current set broke or something happened, um, then we might be like, oh, I'm glad that we have an extra set. But again, if I ask myself, do I want to inventory this? Do I want to keep track of it? I'm gonna have to put it somewhere where I would remember where it is so that if his other set failed, I would know, I'd be like, oh, right, we have another set. It's in the basement or in the garage. But knowing myself now, <laughs> I will not remember it's there. I could put it in the most clever spot that makes the most sense where I would look for it right now if I were to look for it. And it would not occur to me that we had another set. We would just go buy another set. And then the next time I go to clean the basement, I'll be like, oh, darn it, we had another set, right? So if I ask myself, do I want to inventory this anymore? I don't because I don't trust that I'm gonna remember that it's there, even though it's perfectly good, right? Perfectly useful, nice heavy duty set. I just, I know myself and I'm not gonna remember it's there. So do I wanna inventory this anymore? No, unfortunately, I do not. And I know some of you are thinking like, yeah, your space is kind of overwhelming, but mine's really overwhelming. Like I have boxes stacked to the ceiling or I can't even walk in the space. And I wanna encourage you that the process is still the same. By asking these questions, it's causing us to rank the stuff. It causes us to let the stuff that truly is important rise to the top, get a spot in the container, and then the rest just has to go because we don't have space for it. Okay, but lastly, let's talk about motivation. How do we get motivated to tackle a space like this? I recently did a survey in my Facebook group and I said, what is the thing that stands in your way the most from you getting decluttering done? And I honestly thought that it was gonna be time or having you know, commitments to family members or other people or jobs that take a lot of extra time or energy or things like that, right? And it wasn't. The thing by far that most people said holds them back is motivation. So an interesting thing happened the other day. Well, not that interesting. We got an Amazon box in the mail, right? This is a regular occurrence. And it was sitting on the table. I knew what was in it, so I hadn't even opened it yet. Adeline walked by and she said, ooh, can I open that? And I said, it's, it's not for you, like who cares? And she goes, I still think it's fun to open the boxes. And I said, do you know why that is, Adeline? And she's like, why? I'm like, because you get a dopamine rush from it. When we open something, it's like a present. Even though it's not even a present, it's not for her. We still get a dopamine rush opening it, seeing what's inside, taking it out. And so when it comes to motivation, I think the idea of motivation is very elusive. We try to find tricks and tactics, but I think we need to recognize something that's very powerful in our life, and that is, the dopamine response. And so this is a very powerful motivator in our lives, but I think most of us aren't taking advantage of it. So when I wanted to get back in the habit of walking every day and getting my 10,000 steps in every day, it was winter, I was not feeling motivated. I just like, I really didn't care that much, but I knew it was important and I wanted the benefits of it, right? And so I made a deal with myself that the only time I would watch a YouTube video was when I was walking on the treadmill. And so I paired that activity with 
a dopamine response. Plus you're also getting like the feel good, you know, uh, from activity or whatever. So it was like a double whammy or whatever. But I knew myself, I was motivated by getting some time to watch YouTube videos or watch something else online. And so I would, the only time I would allow myself to do that was when I was walking. So what if we said, you know what, I don't allow myself to go on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube <laughs> unless I'm working on something. I'm decluttering, I'm playing it in the background while I'm tidying, or I'll reward myself if I do five minutes of tidying or picking up in this room that horrifies me and scares me, I only have to do five minutes and then I can spend that same amount of time on Facebook or on something else that I enjoy. If we would start to do that, I think we would feel motivated because we all know that we just have to get the ball rolling, right? Most of us are very much alike that if we can just get in there and get a little bit done, we're gonna keep going. We'll say five minutes, but before we know it, it's been an hour and we've made some progress and we're feeling a whole lot better about ourselves. And so I really wanna encourage you to try and use things that give a dopamine response. And you know, maybe from time to time, it is buying something. I was very motivated when we, when we originally finished this room to get it done um, by buying some you know, new bedding and a few decorative things to really make this room feel complete. Like that really motivated me and spurred me on to get everything done in this room. And so maybe from time to time, it is buying something and rewarding ourselves with that too but there's other ways uh, to do it as well. But I think if we would pair that with decluttering, that we would, could really start to see some good progress in our house. Okay, so here's the room put back together, completed. We have our soda water here. We have our donation box and our black trash bag. I'm gonna go take those out right now before anybody rummages through them. And we got the bed made and put back together. We also have the wardrobe nice and organized as well. So this feels much better. And for those who have asked, these containers, you saw them in our camper video too, um, they're from Target. They're in the dollar spot for $5. And then I also found them back in the like storage containers too. So they were in both locations at the Targets that I went to. So know that you're not alone if you're ever completely lacking in motivation. You're actually more, more normal than not, right? Uh, so you're definitely not alone. And hopefully too, while you're watching our videos, you can be working in the space that we're talking about as well. So I'll link some help, helpful playlists down below too. Still one of my all time favorite videos is the five minute video and what you can get done in five minutes. So I'll definitely link to that one. But otherwise, I really wanna encourage you, keep putting these parameters around your stuff. Is it container worthy? Do I want to inventory it? Keep asking yourself those questions so we have something to weigh it against. And I think you really can make a ton of progress in your house. I know you can, you're totally capable. You can do it. I hope you have a really good day. I love you and I'll see you again soon.